Hey, how you doing? Welcome to another uh, episode of Smitty's Art Explorations Art Instruction Videos. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about um, watercolor painting, okay? Um, and uh, going over some basics um, using that medium. Um, before we get into that, you know, if you haven't had a chance to um, look at my art supply videos, right? Um, <clears throat> I briefly talked about uh, getting yourself a color wheel. So if you're new to um, doing uh, fine arts or just uh, working with color in general, you know, and you have yourself just a basic set of paint, right? Um, a color wheel uh, breaks down um, all your colors and how to mix colors to make other colors, basically, right? Um, it explains it really well, okay? This one's uh, really inexpensive to get. You know, it's got um, uh, matches on both sides and uh, describes what you do, and what happens when you're adding white, gray, or black to colors, right? Um, and um, yeah, and when you spin the wheel, you know, it shows what happens when you're matching certain colors here with uh, colors on the outer edge, okay? So, um, it's a great tool to have, you know, for beginners, right? Um, if you're just starting out, I highly recommend it just so you start getting a grasp of, you know, color matching, okay? Now, <clears throat> if you're really going to be involved um, with uh, working with uh, colors long term, you know, doing, doing art and everything, Color Mixing Bible is what professional artists use. This is a great source reference book. I highly recommend you getting it. Um, not only does it really break down uh, color matching, but it also does it um, with particular mediums, okay? And it gives examples, you know, so you got color pencils, pastels, gouache paint, watercolors, right? So let's stop here real fast. So, you know, it breaks it down where you have your, your, your uh, basic hue on the left and then uh, another basic hue on the right. And then what happens when you start blending them in you know, um, and it breaks down in three sections and then it describes, you know, um, what those sections represent, you know, in terms of, um, uh, blending those two colors, you know, that coincide, right? Um, acrylics and oil paints. So color mixing Bible, awesome source reference material to have. I highly recommend you getting it. If doing, um, art in general is, is something you're really going to enjoy. Um, and you find yourself, uh, having, um, having yourself doing it long-term. All right, moving on. <clears throat> now, if you um, didn't watch my um, pencil illustration videos, the basics, um, Smithsonian's Natural History Encyclopedia. This is an awesome source reference material to have for uh, photo references. So basically, this book, if it's on the planet Earth, it's most likely going to be in here, right? So real fast, you know, it's got birds, all different kinds of birds, uh, reptiles, right fish um he gets into bugs you even got mushrooms bacteria plants right rocks minerals you know it's it's all in here um just a great source reference to have period you know uh if, if you're not even if you're not doing that um you know it's a lot of interesting information in here uh, i enjoy it. it's one of my one of my uh, favorite um, source reference books okay all right let's set these aside um, now, uh, besides these videos, if you like to check out my artwork, you know, you can see me on Instagram at Smitty Art Explorations. That's my um, Instagram profile. And, um, if you are able to, you know, this is the, all these videos are free. Um, but if you are able to, um, and if, you know, if you're, uh, feeling generous, basically, um, donations are accepted. Um, I, I run through cash app, um, and the profile is dollar sign S M I T I C E, right? It's dollar sign Smith Ice. Um, <clears throat> completely not required, but you know, any donations help me continue on with these video series, so they would be greatly appreciated. Um, but yeah, either way, you know, let's just have some fun, okay? All right, <clears throat> let's go over um, some of the supplies here real fast. So what we're going to be working with, okay, is. Uh, I'm going to show you real fast um, just some basic washing washes using the fine tech metallic paints that I talked about in the art supply video, right? Here's an example of a uh, finished um, uh, painting that I did. I was just playing around with the paint, seeing what it could do, um, you know, and it works best on black paper, right? <clears throat> so that way the uh, metallic sheen and the colors really pop, okay? Um, the other paints we're going to use are um, uh, block watercolor paints, which are over here. Uh, these are high-end expensive paints, right? So if you're just starting out, you know, and you're not sure if watercolor is something that you're going to uh, be doing long-term, you know, get yourself uh, the basic disc um, 
on paints. And I described that in the art supply videos. Um, so go ahead and check that out. Um, you know, if you're unsure uh, what kind of paints you, uh, you plan on getting. Okay. But the block watercolor paints, they're um, what professional artists use. They're, they're great quality, well worth the money, but they are expensive. Okay. So um, with brushes, I got myself a flat wash brush. I got myself a flat brush. I got a um, liner brush for detailing. So then I got two round brushes, one for um, big lines, one for smaller detail lines, okay? These are watercolor brushes, right? Uh, once again, um, you, you can get expensive or inexpensive brushes, uh, whether it's watercolor or acrylic, you know. Um, inexpensive acrylic brushes work great for both uh, acrylic paints and watercolor paints. So, you know, if you're just starting out with both uh, mediums, you know, or just with paint in general, you know, um, they can work with oils too, um, but we're not really going to discuss oils. Uh, it's something, it's a medium I don't use um, for uh, uh, basically health and safety reasons. You know, they're very toxic and I just don't have a studio set up to, to manage that environment. So um, back to the brushes, you know, <clears throat> these are watercolor brushes, you know, specifically made for watercolors. They're, they're uh, thinner bristles, they're softer, they have more flex to them right um versus our acrylic paint brushes that are just a little more denser because the paint's uh, a little denser itself okay um and like i said if you're just starting out and you're just playing around with paints in general you can get uh, inexpensive um, acrylic brushes and they're going to work fine for both but uh, when i paint with watercolors i use uh, good watercolor brushes okay just because i'm, I'm an artist is what i do all right so <clears throat> i've already taped down um, my my paper right with with uh, just simple artist masking tape okay um, it's inexpensive and what this does here taping the borders it helps prevent curling all right so this type of paper um, you know when you get it too wet it will start curling on you when it dries okay so that's just something to look out for uh, something I didn't talk about in the art supply video um, is another type of watercolor paper right so this is a watercolor block so this is basically it's a smooth smooth textured um, watercolor paper but it's got um, glue uh, around the edges here and this glue basically acts the same as the paint does okay so it keeps everything in place and that way it helps prevent curling right and then when you're done painting you know if you want to frame it or hang it up or whatever then you just got to take a very fine blade you know uh, exacto knife blade or something and then uh, break the seam for that page you know and then you just tear it off like you would a normal pad of paper okay uh, this paper is a little more expensive than um, the general pad I talked about in the art supply video, but um, you know the quality is is, is a little better than uh, the cheaper ones. And you know, like I said, then you don't have to tape down, you know, um, your pages, and you don't have to buy buy your tape. All right, so that's that paper. All right, so let's get down to it. Yeah, um, when I did this piece, this piece is. Yeah, it's about a year old, okay? Now, something I want to talk about with watercolors real fast, right? Um, watercolor paint, as long as you don't put a protective seal on it, when you add water to it, it will liquefy again, okay? So, for instance, here on my palette tray, right, I got a little paint that's been dried out for a long time. I just wet that paper towel, you know, and uh, put a little pressure down, rub that off, and then, boom. There you go. It's clean again, right? That's the nice thing about watercolors is you can always come back to it, you know, rework it, add more uh, uh, paint to it and everything. But the thing is, is, you know, whatever paint I'm going to add to this uh, on top of it, you know, it, it's going to uh, uh, blend with what's existing. Okay, so it's just something to be mindful for. All right, but let me show you real fast what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm just going to wet this brush here, all right? And I'm not, you know, this is just a practice piece. I'm not too overly uh, worried about doing things to it, right? But as you see here, I'm just rubbing the brush, okay? Let's get some more water. Rubbing the brush, and you can see the paint now is starting to lift, right? And it's actually creating more of a, a water effect with the wave, you know, that I was kind of um, hoping to get initially anyways, right, with the wave crashing. So that's the nice thing about watercolor paint. Like I said, I haven't touched this this painting in like a year, right? But it's still coming up, you know, just like I was working on it an hour ago, all right? So that's a nice thing. But once again, um, you know, 
you're trying to keep that your paint in place then you got to get basically like a rubber cement coat it over when it's dried and then that way you can go ahead and paint freely around uh, other areas you know if you're trying to do a wash over or something like that and then you just pull the rubber cement off when everything dries again okay <clears throat> let me clean this off here all right so what i got you know in terms of um supplies in front of me is you know i've got a rinsing cup um i got a backup rinsing cup and then i got three cups here of water that maybe you know i can add tones to uh, add paint to if i really want to have a um a wash going on right so <clears throat> why don't i start off with that okay well, let's do yeah let's do this and then i'm gonna go ahead and just pick a paint color you know now think about watercolor paint and it took me a while to realize this because i usually work with acrylics you know and acrylic paint is it's it's paint right but when you're working with watercolors you're actually painting water and you gotta have you know think about that you know like what what does water do you know how does how does it work how can you um brush it around right and then what you can do when you brush just more water down is then you just add some color right and then i'm going to go ahead and throw down the paint and then i can just take plain water and just dab it in right and then let let the water move the paint around right and that's it okay okay so i take that now what i don't want to do all right i'm going to rinse this out I'm going to rinse it out again so it's nice and clean, okay? I'm going to dab it off on my, on my uh, towels. Uh, what I don't want to do is take uh, that dirty water and then add it to another cup of paint because now I've contaminated, I've cross-contaminated the colors, okay? Um, something to be mindful for. So then I go to a fresh cup, right? And then, I don't know, let's go with uh, this color here, right? And then we're going to go ahead and add that around okay all right that's some more okay and then i can set that down for a second and then let me take a big round and just get some some clean water let me just move that around here all right and drop it in drop some more in okay now you can see uh, if you look close, you know, when you're painting, you're going to see that the water is moving the paint around. Just like kind of like uh, um, when you have oil on top of uh, on top of water, you know, you see that sheen start moving around. Right. Same kind of same kind of thing going on here. OK. Now, if I want, since this brush is already dirty, you know, and I'm getting these colors blended anyways, I can move them around together and that's fine. OK. And I just want to be mindful of, you know, how the colors are blending, what it is I'm actually trying to portray, you know, um, what's looking mm -hmm. good composition wise, right? Let's clean that off. You know, and like I said, here I'm just playing around, just doing a basic wash. Okay. And then we'll take the big flat wash brush and we'll really add some, some water in here, right? Now this paper here is just regular sketch paper, so it's actually absorbing the water uh, more than watercolor paper would. But as an example, you know, um, with the using the uh, metallics here, that's it's a it's a good good paper to have just because it's black paper. Okay, so here let me add some copper in there, All right? And then I just move it around. All right. And the other thing about watercolor paper, or excuse me, watercolor paint, is because it's colored water. You know, if I'm having it on an easel, um, you got to be more mindful that everything just doesn't start running down the the side, the front of the paper there, right? So um, the more water you add, you know, you just got to monitor it a lot more closely. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add some gold. Gold will look good in there. Okay. Let me clean that off. I don't want to cross. 
cross contaminate because I just blended it in with the copper. All right. Gotta clean all that off again. So this is why having multiple brushes, you know, on hand and multiple uh, uh, color trays are really gonna um, help you out, right? In terms of uh, time and all that good stuff. Clean that off. Take some water, I'm gonna brush that on. Take water and pull it. Just gonna pull it. Right, and add any paint. I'm just pulling these the water and then that color is gonna mix in with the coppers here. And then I'm gonna pull the copper into the blues. Right. Now to get get some really good tone in there, right? Get like real richness of the color. You know, it's gonna take a little bit with these fine techs, you know, to pull the pigment off because it's you know it's metallic, so it's it's a hardened paint, right? More so than uh, the block paint, okay. So in there, and that's, you know, that's kind of basically how you, you know, start blending with a wash, right? Now, you know, one thing I like about acrylic, uh, excuse me, one thing I really like about watercolors, probably more than any other medium, is <clears throat> the ability to play and experiment with it, right? Because it's just water, you know? Um, and you're not really so concerned about it drying. If it dries, you can just wet it again and you're good to go, you know, to play around some more. Um, Acrylics, you, you don't have that option. When it's dry, it's dry, and that's it, right? <laughs> but with um, watercolors, it's a gift that keeps on giving, you know? So you put a, a protective seal over it, okay? All right, so that's enough with that. I just wanted to show fine text, and then just kind of how the, the color pops and just some brief um, washing, you know? Now let's go into... This, this page here, All right? So I've already picked myself a uh, photo reference, okay? To paint from, right? And we'll get more into more detail with it. Set that 
side and let it dry. You know, because I'm not worried about that one. It's probably just going to end up in the, the garbage anyways. All right. So let's get to the main part of the lesson here. Okay, so <clears throat> here, right, this is basically going to be all washed, okay? <clears throat> but you can see the, the difference in, in colors, right? Yeah, let me put some weight on that. There we go. Okay, so. You want to start with the background first, right? Always, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're doing a pencil illustration or acrylic paint, you know, you always want to start with the background first, okay? So I got my wash, right? Move that aside. Let me dump these in there. Yeah, some fresh water here. out that's the other nice thing about watercolors is it's super easy to clean you know don't need any soap like you do with acrylics when you clean your brushes you know you just rinse it out a little bit and that's it all right all right let's get down to the colors okay so <clears throat> with these block paints right you know i got myself a color card that came came with the set okay so i pretty much know what i'm looking at um Especially with some of these darker blocks, you're not too sure, you know, what color you're actually going to be uh, um, pulling from. Okay. Um, so first thing I want to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and put a wash down, right? Just going to wet the paint, I mean, wet the paper. Okay. Just going to get that general area for those purples, right? That's a good good dampness to it, okay? I want to go ahead, I want to pull the other flat brush to start with. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm looking at that purple in there. Yeah. I'm going to pull this color here. Alright. Just going to add a little to that cup, right? So I'm just going to throw it down. Right, you see how it's uh, very transparent, you know, um, unlike uh, acrylic paints, right? It's very thin. And just add more hue to it, okay? And if I want, right, say I, I'm thinking I got too much, I can just take and pull it up. Just take a wet brush and pull it up. See that? Okay. That's the other nice thing about watercolors, you know, is it's very it's very soft looking paint. Very soft looking. Right. Clean that up. Put it down, same thing with this one. Clean that off. Right down. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead with the blah, 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 magenta pink there. You know, for those clouds that are bursting through. Let's see. Yeah. Color there. All right. Water it down a little. Just pull some of the paint away. Take my flat my wash brush and just really kind of blend it in more. You know, so I'm not trying to have such a deep darkness to it. You know, I'm trying this is a you know the sky, so I'm trying to give it that um, air effect, so to speak, right? Atmospheric. 
resemblance. Now you can see it started turning purple, right? Because I had the blue and the magenta, so it started turning purple. And that's the thing you gotta watch out for in watercolors. Okay, they can just blend really easily. Um, that's all right in this case. You know, I can just add some more magenta, dark red. that off get it good I know my brush isn't no my brush is clean the water's staying clean I'm gonna go back to that blue okay and just throw that down All right now I gotta be clean and pick blue some of that water in there. There we go. And I just take that straight to the paint. Or straight to the paper, rather. Excuse me. Okay. It's that clean. Always rinse your brush. When you go back to your paint tray, okay, so once again, you don't want to cross contaminate your colors, right? Definitely don't want to do that. And it's not that you can't clean them, you know, you can clean your, your color blocks if you happen to cross contaminate, but it's a pain in the butt, you know, something you don't really want to spend your time doing, you know, and you just simply have to just clean your brushes each time, okay? Alright, let's throw in some lines there. Right. Okay. Now <clears throat> I'm not necessarily trying to get an exact photo replicant right now, you know, I'm just trying to show some basic um, watercolor techniques and everything. Uh, you know, in terms of throwing down wash and that's and color blending. All right, let's get into that. Some real dark purple there. So for that, uh, I'm gonna take my round brush, my large round brush, and let's get into the proper color here. It's a real dark. Where's that? Yeah, red banana one, red violet. Oh, yeah, get some red violet going here. All right. Some water on the paper first just to give it a, a dampened base. Okay. Alright. Then I'm gonna really throw in the clouds. And you can see how the water, you know, is reacting with the paint and everything. And it's kind of giving a uh not a blotchy, you know, but it's not a flat, it's not a flat looking tone either, right? Um, unlike what you have with like acrylics, you know. And that's great. That's another thing I love about watercolors is, you know, you, it has that, that potential, you know, to let the paper shine through and all that good stuff. So, and you're not, you don't have to use white, right? You're not having to spend all that money for a titanium white paint. You know, you just let the paper come out and it lightens up <coughs> your, uh, your uh, hues, right? No, no, probably went a little too far. You know, if I'm looking at that, yeah, should have only been there. So let's see if I can correct that. Show you how to do that correction. Boom, I just wet it, try and draw it back, right? I can just take a paper towel to dab it. Okay, draw it back. And you can you can kind of do this with acrylics, but you got to catch it quick. Most of the time, you have to go back over with titanium white. You know, to go over any any possible mistakes. 
that you might have made. But here, you just add some water and dab the paint off. That's a nice, that's a nice thing about watercolors, you know. Okay. Clean that off. So I'm going to come in and just take more of that blue, right? Really start blending some colors, making it more look like the photo, right? Now you can see the paper's already starting to, to bubble up and everything, you know. Um, and that's just that's just the way it, this paper works, okay. Um, but you know, when it's all said and done, you can put it in a frame, have it nice and flat, and, you know, and it'll look it'll look fantastic, you know. So in the in the interest of what we're doing here. You know, we're more focused on just going through the basic techniques and color, uh, color mixing and, and um, you know, uh, <clears throat> trying to recreate from the, from the photo, All right? Um, I had a little too much, a little too much water in there, so I'm going to come back to the purple, All right? Add that in. Yeah, more purple. Okay, I'm gonna switch brushes here. that set for a little while. Alright, now let's go to the next level, next level down. More of like an orange. Okay, I'll go ahead and grab the flat brush and I'll go pull off the orange. I don't want to hit, I don't want to hit that purple. Because then it's going to turn out like mud. Okay. Because that's what happens when you mix those two colors. All right. So, I'm going to add some more water. Give it that atmospheric effect. All right. Got to be real careful there. We'll come to the edge. Okay. A solid, solid block. I gotta really dig into it. Pick that pigment up. There we go. So yeah, and I cross contaminated it. So while it's still wet. I'm just going to pull that off. 
real good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, and that's what can happen. It can easily happen when you, you, know, you start rushing through things, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so I end up cross contaminating stuff. And that's all right when it happens, you just, you know, you just fix it, pull it off and you're good to go. So, and all this, like, you know, like, like I said, you know, you're just having fun with the paint this time around, right? Experimenting with it, um, seeing how it reacts to how much water. That's, that's one of, probably one of the most difficult things to learn is how much water you actually have to, you should put down, um, to, to, Determine the, the effects you're you're looking for. Okay. Uh, when you get down into detail work, you use less water, right? And then it becomes more like acrylics. Okay. Now when you're doing washes, just use a lot more water. You know. Um, all right. Let's move on. I use a big brush. Uh, some clean water here. And then let's go grab some reds. Start pulling the, the edge. Pull more from the edge. And then be careful when I get up here. Throw in a wash. Look at other other um, other artists' watercolor paintings and everything, right? You know, really examine what what their what their layers are looking like. Okay, um, watercolor isn't necessarily going to be as as so defined as like uh, oils or acrylics, right? Simply because the fact the simple fact is you're you're um, painting with water, right? Um, and water just you know. Water travels the, la the path of least resistance is what it does, you know, um, and you are more, you know, have the mindset of being more free with it, more free with the paint, right? Um, so when you get, when you get to uh, trying this stuff out, you know, don't, don't think of it 